Is this Windows? That's the question we kept asking ourselves when we were taking a look at the new consumer preview of Windows 8. This is the next generation operating system that's coming from Microsoft that's going to attempt to combine sort of the tablet and desktop worlds into one OS. So it's a really completely different strategy than what Apple is doing with Mountain Lion and iOS. Everything is in one device. And the idea is that you're going to have a completely different type of interface than you're used to on a regular Windows machine. This is a live tile interface similar to what you'll see on uh, Windows phone devices. But Microsoft has added a lot of unique interface tweaks and uh, controls that try to bridge the sort of the mobile and desktop worlds. We're going to walk you through the interface, some of the new apps, and what we like and what we don't about Windows 8. So one critical difference between Windows 8 and regular Windows is obviously the start screen. And this is where everything literally starts for the user. And what you'll see is that these live tiles are a lot different than what you'll see on other operating systems like Android or iOS in the sense that you don't have static icons. You, know, you have live updates that are coming through in terms of new email. You can personalize the interface with, with photos uh, and even pin your favorite people to the start menu so you can see what their latest social networking statuses are. Uh, and as well as you know, the weather and things like that. And as you scroll through, you'll see that there's more options. And what you have the idea of here of being able to personalize the interface as well. So you can move any of these tiles around, just like that. And you can also group tiles together. So you can see that we just did what's called a semantic zoom. And what that means is that you can see all of your groups of apps together, and you can move one around if you want. And you can also name them. So for example, what we did there was entertainment. So if we wanted to, we could move the music on over here. So the interface is completely your own and completely customizable. And you know, we really like the personalization options that are here, but it also involves a little bit of work. So if you're willing to put in just a little bit of time, you're going to get rewarded. So there are some interface uh, you know, paradigms here that are sort of consistent throughout Windows 8, and we're going to walk you through that. One of the cool things here is, is multitasking. So if you have a bunch of applications open, you can just start pulling them in from the left. This is the Windows Store. This is a, a movie. And you can see that you know, one of the complaints that a lot of people had about Windows 7, that it just wasn't very touch friendly. So with Windows 8, not only is it touch friendly, it's also very fast. But what if you want to see all of your open applications at once? You just sort of slide in and then slide back out just like that. And you can see all of your thumbnails right there. And if you want to close an application, you can just drag it over to the right and off the screen to close it. And at any time, you'll see the Start button right here to get back to the main menu. The other thing that you can do with Windows 8 is uh, borrowing a feature from Windows 7, but making it even better, is Snap. So let's say we have a website over here or something else that we want to drag on the screen. And you can have it take up a, a third of the screen or go even more. And you can, you know, again, start playing your movie over here. And this Snap feature works not only with so-called Metro-style apps, but also desktop apps that work, uh, you know, sort of the classic style of Windows applications. And at any time, you can dive right back into the desktop just by clicking over here. So for those who want the familiar Windows experience, you can have that. But you can also, you know, have all of your other modern touch-friendly apps on the side or you can go to sort of the full desktop experience. What a lot of people might be turned off with with uh, Windows 8 is that the traditional start menu has disappeared. Uh, where it went is over here on the right-hand side. So these are called charms, and Microsoft calls them that because they're always present and they um, you know, sort of deliver you know, what you're looking for. And it's application specific, but also um, pretty general. So if you want to do a search, you can do that here. You can share items. This goes back to the start screen. Uh, and then this is for looking at devices like printers and that sort of thing. And you can dive into settings by pressing this. So you know, one of our favorite features is, is share. And we're going to show you what that looks like um, right now. So let's say you wanted to share something within the browser. And this is the Internet Explorer 10. It's a very touch-friendly interface. If you swipe up here, and this works for every, every single app, you'll see all of your settings and all of your tabs up here. But let's say we wanted to share this page. Click on the Share option. You'll have a couple of options that come up here. For now, it's limited to mail, but you're going to see others come on board as Microsoft works with developers. We're hoping to see Twitter and Facebook and all sorts of third-party apps. I mean, hopefully TweetDeck. That would be nice. So if you click on Mail, you'll see that a message automatically launches. And Windows 8 is supposed to populate this with, with an image. There we go. 
So you can choose your image and then send it off as an email. And while we're here, we can take a look at the split keyboard, which is one of the options available in the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. So the touch sensitivity and the accuracy is really good. So let's say we wanted to send it to our friend Avram. Just type a couple of letters. You'll see that the contacts show up there. You select that. Then you can send it off. The other thing that we like about the split keyboard is that you can use it with your thumbs, which is better for wider tablets like this. And you have the, um, the numeric keypad right in the middle. But you can also go to a full size if you want. And if you go back to the thumb keyboard, you can resize it just by going from small to medium to large. So Microsoft has really thought through the, uh, the text input process. Okay, so overall with Windows 8, we're impressed with the progress that Microsoft has made so far. And, you know, it, it definitely requires a learning curve in terms of, you know, learning this new interface. But we think it's worth the trade-off in, in terms of just having a UI that's uh, more dynamic uh, and interesting and personalized, you know, versus, you know, the competition. Um, but it's definitely going to be a hump for users to get over because there's a lot of swiping from the left side, from the right side, um, from this side to, you know, to get to options. So, you know, it's going to take some getting used to, especially for people who are just used to using the desktop. But Microsoft has done a pretty good job of combining the desktop world and the touch and tablet wor world into one OS. And we can't wait to see what developers do to make sure that there's enough uh, Metro-style apps at launch as well as more compelling hardware in terms of tablets and convertibles and everything in between. This is Mark Spoonauer with a first look at the Windows 8 Consumer Preview.